Why isn't there just one programming language for everything? Websites, games, AI? Wouldn't learning a single language mean less confusion, faster coding, and a simpler life for developers? Or would that create entirely new problems we haven't even thought of? These days, being a software developer means juggling way more than just one language. You've got to learn full ecosystems just to keep up. Front-end developers need JavaScript, CSS, and HTML at minimum. Data scientists gravitate toward Python and R. System programmers rely on C, C++, or Rust. Game developers might use C Sharp with Unity or C++ with Unreal Engine. Mobile developers split between Swift, Kotlin, and cross-platform solutions. But what if we could eliminate all that cognitive overhead? What if every programming task, like building a simple website, even training neural networks, or writing operating systems, could be accomplished with a single, universal oh, yeah. language? Whether it would actually make our lives better or worse is the question, not if it is technically possible. And are all these programming languages truly necessary, or are they just a product of tradition and branding, a single programming language would dramatically reduce the learning curve for new developers. Instead of spending months or years mastering different syntaxes, paradigms, and toolchains, developers could focus entirely on problem solving and system design. You wouldn't have to switch between different programming styles, like object-oriented Java and functional Haskell in one project. Practically speaking, this would make reusing code easier than ever before. Libraries, frameworks, and tools would all work seamlessly together. You wouldn't need to fight with tools just to get different languages to work together. Database drivers, web frameworks, machine learning libraries, and system utilities would all speak the same language, literally. Companies like Julia Computing have built their entire strategy around this vision, positioning Julia as the language that can handle everything like rapid prototyping and high-performance computing. The tooling ecosystem would be incredibly robust. Instead of maintaining separate debuggers, profilers, and IDEs for different languages, the entire developer community would contribute to perfecting a single set of tools. Documentation would be consistent, and knowledge transfer between teams would be effortless. But this is where the dream meets reality. No programming language excels at everything, and that's not by accident. It's by design. Languages are designed to be better at some tasks than others. Python's interpreted nature and dynamic typing make it perfect for rapid prototyping and data exploration, but those same features make it unsuitable for real-time systems where every microsecond matters. Need to maintain compatibility with decades of existing code written in other languages. Financial cost of rewriting critical infrastructure would be staggering. Legacy systems running COBOL in banks, embedded C code in medical devices, and JavaScript powering the web wouldn't simply disappear overnight. Another issue is that innovation can get stuck. When you have multiple languages, you get multiple approaches to solve Solving similar problems. This diversity drives innovation. Concepts from functional languages influence object-oriented ones, which are just different ways of writing code. And performance optimizations discovered in systems languages eventually make their way into higher-level languages. Using just one language could stop new ideas because there's no mix of different approaches. Think of programming languages like tools in a workshop. You wouldn't try to build a house using only a hammer, even if it's the best hammer ever made. Each tool serves a specific purpose. Screwdrivers for screws, saws for cutting, levels for ensuring straightness. The same principle applies to programming languages. This concept was formalized by computer scientist John Osterhout in what became known as the scripting versus system programming dichotomy. System languages like C and Rust prioritize performance, memory control, and predictability, essential for operating systems, embedded devices, and high-frequency trading systems. Scripting languages like Python and JavaScript prioritize developer productivity, rapid iteration, and ease of use, perfect for automation, web development, and data analysis. The domain specialization goes even deeper than this basic dichotomy. SQL wasn't designed to be a general-purpose language, but for database queries, nothing comes close to its expressiveness and optimization capabilities. HTML and CSS aren't programming languages in the traditional sense, but they've evolved specifically to describe document structure and presentation in ways that are both human-readable and machine-processable. And this might sound unexpected, but learning multiple programming languages actually makes you a better developer, not just a more versatile one. Each language embodies different ways of thinking about problems. Functional programming languages teach you to think in terms of data transformations. Object-oriented languages help you model complex systems through abstractions. Logic programming languages like Prolog introduce constraint-based thinking. When you understand multiple paradigms, you start to recognize when problems would be better solved using a different approach, even if you're constrained to work in a single language. A developer who knows both imperative
declarative and functional programming will write better code in either paradigm because they understand the strengths and weaknesses of each approach. Once you've mastered two or three languages deeply, picking up new ones becomes exponentially easier. The fundamental concepts, variables, control flow, data structures, algorithms remain consistent. What changes is syntax and specific language features, which become much easier to absorb when you have a solid conceptual foundation. Let's look at how major tech companies handle this in practice. Facebook's architecture illustrates why language diversity isn't just theoretical. It's essential for scale and performance. Their front end uses JavaScript and React, but the back end runs on a mix of PHP, Python, C++, and Java. Their data infrastructure relies heavily on distributed systems written in Java and C++. While machine learning models are often developed in Python, but deployed using optimized C++ implementations. They don't want to make things complex or it's poor planning, it's deliberate optimization. JavaScript provides the interactivity needed for user interfaces. PHP, and later Hack, allows rapid development and iteration for web services. C++ delivers the performance needed for core infrastructure components handling billions of requests. Each language is deployed where its strengths matter most. YouTube's infrastructure structure tells a similar story. The user-facing website relies heavily on JavaScript, but video processing happens in C++ for performance reasons. Recommendation algorithms might be prototyped in Python, but implemented in more efficient languages for production deployment. Content delivery networks use specialized software written in languages optimized for network programming. Even Julia, despite its ambitious goal of unifying technical computing, hasn't eliminated the need for other languages and most organizations that adopt it. Successful software systems are polyglot by necessity, not by choice. A hypothetical single programming language sounds appealing in theory, but it would likely make us less efficient, not more. Different programming languages exist not just by chance or marketing, but because people have different ways of thinking and working. Thanks for hanging out till the end, and if you didn't hate this, a sub would be awesome, and let me know your thoughts in the comments.